West Marshall got the win tonight. We'll send it out to Dave Bingham, who's with our Coach of the Week, Cody Hackett. Back on the Friday Night Blitz, Coach of the Week, Cody Hackett. I tell you what, Coach, had it all the way. You know, you let him score 12 in the first half, and then you just have to gut check it. What happened at halftime to, to kind of get this thing rolling? I mean, it still wasn't easy, but, man, your kids responded. Yeah, we just had to kind of regroup. You know, they were doing some things to us that we didn't see on film, so we just had to, you know, get them together, talk to them, um, get some things figured out as a coaching staff and put our guys in a position to be successful. Um, and they did a great job responding, coming out in the second half, facing a little adversity, being down 12. Um, but they did a great job. You know, we had F great effort, and we never quit. I get a chance to listen in to you during the game. You stay really calm. We, we have a lot of coaches, but now the adrenaline's flowing. You still got your plays. You're ready to go. Um, I mean, this is what you sign up for. Can you put it into words what it means to be around these young people and do what you do? Oh, it's awesome. I love our kids. Um, they come in, you know, um, they come in to work every day. They work hard in the weight room, out here on the field, and they give us everything we have. So to me, I have to, I have to do that for them, give them everything I have. I am a calm guy. Um, I don't like to yell a lot. Um, sometimes I think that goes to the kids. It might send a wrong message. Um, and they know who I am, and I'm not going to change um, just for that. So, um, But I'm proud of them. Um, we came out of here with a win. It was scary, um, but we didn't quit. A lot of pride in this community, and I think it's what's great about Iowa high school football is the legacy and of course coach Winkler still running around and he's tied to that legacy and you're here. What's it mean for you to still be part of this community and doing this, this what you're doing right now? Oh, it's awesome. And I think our, our fans were awesome. You know, I graduated from here to now, you know, Wink's on my staff and I'm the head coach now and <laughs> it, it's just awesome. You know, you have a bunch of coaches on our staff that graduated from here and they, they know what the tradition is and they want us to be successful and they want us to win and they want our kids to be successful outside of football. And it's just a great atmosphere, great environment tonight and I'm proud of them. And, I don't know. I'm <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a big win against a really good team, and both of them, are, both of you guys, are going to be tough in the playoffs, boy. Kids came up big tonight for Coach Hackett. That's going to wrap it for the Coach of the Week interview. We'll send it back to you in the studio. Thanks, Bingham. Ankeny is off to a four and one start, coming off of a runner-up finish in the state championship last season. A lot of that can be credited to a dynamic connection. Ankeny doesn't rebuild; they reload. <laughs> and they got reinforcements with one of the best players in the state transferring from Roosevelt. It just gave me more prepared for the next level. Um, just make, making the transition more smooth and just being comfortable in college. I think there's a lot of reasons why Jamison came here was because of J.J. Cole. He, he can make a lot of throws that a lot of kids can't make. That move has set up one of the best duos in the state. Both rank in the top 10 for 5A in yards at their respective positions. It's been awesome. The dude's just electric and, um, you know, he's infectious. Everyone, um, you know, J-Mo rubs off on everyone. He's a great leader and, um, you know, he just connects with everyone. JJ a little, a little different, but um, it's good to mess around with him and just have fun. Oh, it's awesome. You know, I trust him with everything and I'm, I know he trusts me and, um, you know, we've only grown with each other um, as time progresses. Even though their careers at Ankeny will be finished after the season, the connection doesn't stop there. Both Cole and Patton are committed to play at Iowa State uh, next year. No, that would be nice, um, you know, just having someone that you know you went to high school with uh, be with you at the next level. It would be nice to have a familiar face at the next level and just transition a little bit smoother. Go. Between the two, they had offers to 26 schools across all Power 5 conferences, but Ames was home. What's neat is, is that they stayed in state it's going to be easy for us to go watch him. Coach Campbell, he, he, he meets all those categories. He checked a lot of boxes, um, you know, and he's, um, he's done a lot of great things at, up at Iowa State. Now the culture over there is different. Uh, coach Campbell is a great coach, and the players over there, just a locker room. It's a great environment. But college is a ways away. There's still a lot of high school football to be played. They just compete. And so the kids see that, and then it makes the rest of our kids want to go to that level. Uh, at the end of the day, want to win. Um, you know, so each and every day, we're always talking to each other, seeing what we see out there on the field, and just trying to get better um, and push each other to become our best. What are the expectations? The state, the state title, yes, sir. In Ankeny, Jake Brown. Getting the ball from JJ isn't too bad. Local 5 Sports. Let's check out that duo right here. We've got Valley at Ankeny, and we start out with J.J. Cole. Look at him. Doesn't have anywhere to go, so he just takes it himself, plows his way into the end zone. Hawks 7, Valley 0. Now Valley's Michael Provenza. He also wants to take it himself, makes a couple moves. The Brock Purdy pump fake 
He goes in, point after he's good, 7-7. Seven, seven. Valley back at it again. That's Mason, Darius Mason running in for the touchdown and JJ Cole responds. There's Jamison Patton, there's that connection. Not a touchdown, but a really good catch and now they finish it off. Cole rolls out to his right and there is Jamison Patton. Touchdown, Ankeny 14 all. Michael, Pro, Michael Provenza again with another rushing touchdown. He dives to the pylon, Ankeny goes up. Back to Cole, and Cole finds Maddox Ward. He makes a man miss, and he goes the distance. 21-21, and Ankeny, they go and get the win. 34-24 to go to five. All right, let's head over to Valley Stadium. Dallin Catholic taking on Johnston. The Maroons deep in Dragon territory, and Jackson Smolik fires that one to Cooper Nicholson. He comes down with it in the end zone, even with the defender in his face. Dowling up 7-0, but later in the first, Will Nuss scrambling. He finds a man downfield. That's Rex Woodley, who makes the grab over the top and takes it all the way inside the 10-yard line. But the Maroons, ah, oh, they take back the momentum. Jake Anderson gets the interception here, and Dowling gets the ball back at their own one-yard line. But Johnson would get things back on track in the second quarter. Nuss. It's Lucas Hillius who's wide open in the end zone for the touchdown. But Dowling would be too much for Johnson to overcome tonight. The Maroons win this one 42 to 19. Well, there's still plenty more to come here on Friday Night Blitz. And after the break, we'll head to Urbandale where the Jayhawks were taking on the winners of three straight Ankeny Centennial.